Hello and welcome. In this video, we will find out what are equal sets. Or, in other words, when do we say that two sets are equal? Two sets A and B are equal if all elements of A are also elements of B, and similarly, all elements of B are also elements of A. When this happens, then we say that set A is equal to set B. And when two sets are equal, we notice that the number of elements of set A will be equal to number of elements of set B. Now let's take a look at some examples and understand what does this really mean. So let's say we have a set A which contains the numbers 1, 2, 3. And then we have a set B that contains numbers 3, 2, 1. So in this example, can we say set A is equal to set B? Let's find out. So the way we are going to do this is that we are going to start with every element of A and find out if that exists in B. So the number 1, do we see number 1 in B? Actually, it does exist here. What about the second element, number 2? We notice that 2 also exists here. And finally, the number 3 is also here. So at this point, can we say that set A equals set B? Answer is no, we cannot. Now we have to go the other way around and check if every element in B actually exists in A. So the number 3 obviously exists in A, the number 2 exists in A, and the number 1 exists in A. So in this case, we will say yes, set A is indeed equal to set B. Now, why do we have to check the other way around. And the reason is this. So let's add a new element here called 4, the number 4. If we would have done the first pass and checked only for element elements in set A, then we would have seen that 1 exists in B, 2 exists in B, 3 belongs in B. And then based on that, we would have said A equal to B. But notice here that the element 4, this element, it does not belong in A. And so in the second example with 4, element 4 in B, we would say that set A is not equal to set B. And the reason here is that the number 4, it belongs to set B, but the number 4, it does not belong to set A. And hence, set A is not equal to set B. Now let's take a look at some more examples. So what about here? So what can we say in this particular example? Here we have a set A, uppercase A, that contains elements A, B, C, lowercase A, B, C, and we have set B that contains A and B. So we notice that the element A obviously exists, element B obviously exists, but C is not in B. So for element C, it belongs to A, but element C, it does not belong to set B. And therefore, we say that set A is not equal to set B. Let's take a look at our next example. Here we have two sets. The first set is represented in the, uh, I, would, I should say, roster or tabular form, but the second one is represented in set builder form. We have seen before that a set can have two representations, and I'm going to provide the link of that video here. So when we have a situation like this, what we are going to do, we are going to convert both of the set representations into roster or tabular form. So C is already good. Let's convert D into the roster form. So let's rewrite now D as, so the set D is defined as it contains element X. X is a positive odd integer and X lies in this range. So between 10 and 20, what are the integers? So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Those are the integers between 10 and 20. So now, x is a positive odd integer. So we have to write 11 
Now, what about 12? Can we write 12 as an element of D? We cannot because 12 is not odd. 12 is even. So 12 does not count. Then we have to write 13. Similarly, 15. Then we will have 17. We will have 19. What about 21? 21 actually is more than 20. So we cannot write 21. So this is set D. 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. And we see that set C is 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. And indeed, we can say that set C is equal to set D. And let's take a look at one last example here. Here, both of the sets are given in set builder form. So let's convert each of them in roster or tabular form. So let's start with set E. So E is equal to, so E actually contains element X, where X is a letter in the word apple. So then E will contain A, then P. So we have A, P, P, L, E. So A, P, L, and E. So why did we not write P twice? Because remember that we do not repeat elements in a set. So even though we have here two P's, we write them, with represent them with only one P. And what about F? set f so set f contains l e a p so we can write l e a p and when we compare we see that all elements of set e are elements of set f and similarly all elements of f are elements of e therefore we say that set e is indeed equal to set F.